Hi, my name is Dr. Kristen Moon, and I just wanted to give you some details about the chemistry class that I'm offering for high schoolers through True North Homeschool Academy. First, just some, some brief details about myself. I'm a scientist by training. I have a PhD in molecular genetics and microbiology and an undergraduate degree in microbiology. I plan to uh, have a career in lab research but when I had my sons, I decided that I really wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. So I left the lab behind and we discovered homeschooling and my sons were homeschooled all the way through preschool, from preschool through high school graduation. They are now college students, they're both thriving and they're both majoring in the sciences. Um, about three years ago, when I saw that my time homeschooling was coming to an end, I decided that what I really wanted to do with my degree and with my passion for science was to continue serving the homeschool community by teaching um, science classes to homeschoolers. So I have a business, I have a blog, um, I have self-paced online classes, I do online tutoring, and I also teach online classes, including the classes that I teach through True North Homeschool Academy. So what do we cover in my chemistry class? Well, so the format of the class is this. We meet once a week for a live online interactive class. I can see the students, the students can see me, the students can see each other, we can talk to one another. It's a dynamic interactive class and it's a lot of fun. Then after our live class, the students will log on to their learning platform and they will see their assignments for the week. And they will complete their assignments, which may include homework problems, calculations, may include online simulations or labs, may include hands-on labs, you never know what I'm going to assign. I try to give a variety of different types of assignments. So they will complete their assignments, turn it in, and I will take care of all of the grading. None of my classes require a textbook. I will provide links to a free online textbook for chemistry for students who prefer to learn best by reading, but I don't require it of my students. Uh, um, instead, I provide all of the curriculum and resources that the student needs to succeed in my class. Um, okay, so this is what we're going to be covering. Um, we're going to start off the year making sure we're familiar with the math that we need for chemistry. We learn how to take measurements. We know we learn what units are and how to convert between units. We talk about chemical and physical properties and chemical physical changes. We jump into the atom and we learn all about atomic structure and ions, electrons and where they live inside an atom and why electrons are so important. We talk about chemical bonding and the different types of chemical bonds. We move into talking about chemical reactions and the five types of chemical reactions. We learn about the mole and why that's such an important concept to master in chemistry. We learn about stoichiometry. Um, then we move into solutions and acids and bases, the gas laws, chemical equilibrium and chemical kinetics. We talk about redox reactions and nuclear chemistry. I know that sounds a lot, but the way we do it, we start slow and we build up on each prior unit. It's uh, We're building a firm foundation. And by the time we get to the end of the course, students are amazed at how much that they have learned, especially considering where they started from. So my students do have homework that they have to complete, but whenever I can in all of my classes, I try to make what the student is learning applicable to real life. Because if a student doesn't understand why they're learning something, how it's relevant to their life, they just tune you out. And I don't want that to happen. So I have lots of activities for them to do and lots of labs. Um, when we get to our solutions unit, um, students will make their own saturated solution of sugar water and they end up making rock candy crystals, which they can eat. We do flame tests when they're learning about electron configurations and they can actually, um, this is what copper looks like, the element copper when um, it is heated in a flame. So they can test some different elements that they have around their house to see what flame color it produces. When we get to acids and bases, students make a pH indicator and they examine what items in their households are acids and bases. When we get to talking about redox reactions and single displacement reactions, students can actually find a tarnished piece of silver jewelry or a silverware or anything around their house. And they actually can use chemistry to make it go from tarnished to clean. Um, I always give 
um, examples of how our chemistry relates to real life when we're talking about electrons and atomic structure that relates to how fireworks get their color. Um, when we're talking about chemical bonds and enthalpy and energy, that relates to why we eat food. I mean, I know we eat food because it tastes good, but biologically we eat food to get the energy that is trapped inside the chemical bonds. Um, when we're talking about molecules and combustion reactions, we learn about incomplete combustion and how carbon monoxide can be produced during incomplete combustion. And that's why we have catalytic converters on our car. And that's also why we have carbon monoxide detectors in our homes. Um, I give lots of assignments to help students master the concepts that we're learning. I don't give so much homework that it's overwhelming. I, I'm very respectful and sensitive to students' time, but I do give adequate assignments so that a student masters what we're learning. They do lots of applied math. So all those math skills that your student has been learning all these years, they actually get to apply them in chemistry. They get lots of practice using a scientific calculator. This is something I'm very passionate about. Um, I find a lot of high schoolers come to my class and they don't have a, a calculator. They may use the calculator on their phone or even the one on their computer, but what they really need practice is using a handheld scientific calculator. For one thing, they're not gonna be able to use the calculator on their phone or their computer if they take a standardized test, for example, the ACT or the SAT, and they won't be able to use their calculator on their phone or their computer if they go on to college. So they need to get comfortable using a scientific calculator. So I take the time to actually walk them through how to use their scientific calculator, and then they can use it for the rest of the course. Um, homework in my class is graded for completion. So in this way, if a student does their homework and turns it in, they get 100% for homework, even if they get answers wrong. I will correct their homework and I will give them feedback and help if they need it. But a student never has to worry about getting a bad grade just because they don't understand the material. I want to know if they don't understand the material so that I can take the time to review with them and help them succeed. Um, we also play lots of games in my class. Um, for example, when we're learning about the organization of the periodic table, after I tell the students how the periodic table is organized, and as we talk about the different parts of the periodic table, we, we review by playing a game of bingo. And so whoever was paying attention, they're going to have an advantage um, in, in you know, playing that game. And at the end of the year, we review the class, we review all the content that we've learned in the class by playing chemistry Jeopardy. And then there's two different projects that the students will perform for me um, at the end of the first semester, their last class before winter break, they will submit an element project. So by this time in the course, they know about the periodic table, they know about metals and nonmetals, they know about the the um, about how atoms come together and bond. They know about electron configuration, so they choose whatever element from the periodic table that they want to investigate, and then they investigate it. And I have a list of things that they need to tell me. Where is it found in nature? Is it a metal or non-metal? How many protons does it have? How many electrons? But they know all how to do this by this point in the course. And then they present what they have learned to me. It can be a report. Um, it can be a slideshow. It, they can make a model, whatever they want. I love to see their creative activity shine through. And then at the very end of the year, once we've covered all that we have to cover in chemistry, they do another report on a molecule. And I ask them to choose a molecule that they use in their everyday lives. So this, I'm showing you on the screen some examples from my last um, year's chemistry class. I had a student do a report on acetone. I had, a, I had several students do reports on caffeine and I learned incredible things from my students. And I'm a big caffeine addict, but I didn't know some of these things. I was educated by my students. And then um, a different student did one on petroleum. So, um, you know, we have a wide range of activities and um, just different things that the students can learn in my class. We have a lot of fun. If you have any questions about this class or any of the classes that I offer, please reach out to me. I'm happy to answer your questions.